Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off discussing Ryzen 7000. Not just the release date, but also pricing information and also the available SKUs as well. I'm sure you'll agree that the release date is great, but, well, what's the pricing going to be and how are AMD going to segment their lineup? Particularly given Intel's Raptor Lake, it does give Intel a lot of advantages, perhaps, when it comes to kind of divvying up core counts for their various SKUs, since they have well, more cores to work with. It's going to be a fascinating battle, I, su I suspect, between Zen 4 and the 13th generation processors, and we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I believe it was WNXOD who first posted this image onto the internet. Now, where they got this image from, I don't know. And also, which event was, well, this even taken in? Again, we don't know. It looks to be some type of local event. And I have actually attended kind of events like this myself previously with companies like MSI. Um, I'm not saying it was MSI that was hosting this event. I just want to be really clear. I'm just saying it looks kind of like a local event and this could be either for retailers or perhaps just kind of focus groups or whatever. Um, just an example. Again, these kind of events are quite common in the industry. So it's not really a surprise that we're starting to see these events occurring, especially as we get closer to the launch of uh, Ryzen 7000 series. Now you can see yourself the images here. And basically, um, it seems like we're going to see the launch of Ryzen 7000 on September 15th. Now, there is a small asterisk. It is possible that the motherboards could launch earlier with non, you know, Zen 4 processors or something like that. We can't rule out the possibility, but it's much more likely, of course, at this stage that Ryzen 7000 is scheduled to launch on September 15th, assuming that A, AMD doesn't decide to shift this release date back, and B, this information is accurate to begin with. For example, it could be someone sent, you know, the event coordinator the wrong email, it's like, oops, that's supposed to be October 15th. Of course, I'm just saying, these things can change. But, honestly, September does seem like the most likely release date for Ryzen 7000 series. We've discussed it on the channel several times before. September does seem to be roughly the window that AMD are aiming at. To my understanding, it seems like we're going to see Ryzen 7000 launch in September, and then around a month to a month and a half later, um, it seems that uh, Nave 31 is going to launch. So that's going to be late October, possibly early November. Nave 33 is looking to be around well, let's just say end of that end of this year, excuse me, or possibly early next year. Quite frankly, I've heard tons of conflicting information regarding N33, and it gets a lot trickier when we look at the flood, to be honest with you, of inventory from GPUs at the moment for the whole mining thing. And second point, of course, is that AMD have recently refreshed its RDNA 2 lineup. Early next year, though, we're going to start to see Phoenix launch. I believe the schedule is still going to be showing this at CES. And then later on, we're going to see N32. So basically, AMD's lineup is going to be kind of packed. But of course, getting to another very important point, what about the available SKUs? The best way I can really put this in a succinct format anyway, and we'll go further into what Grayman himself has said in just a moment on Twitter, is it seems that AMD are basically mirroring what they did with the Zen 3 launch. Um, this pretty much matches what I've said on the channel a few times before. The highest in SKU is basically to be 16 cores, 32 threads, um, obviously you have the small IPC gains over Zen, uh, with Zen 4, excuse me, but the massive clock frequency advantage. And so it's going to be a very impressive processor. 
Outside of this, we're going to see the 7900X, 7800X, and the 7600X. And then potentially later on, we'll see the 7700X, but it doesn't seem to be available at launch. I suspect that we're probably going to see a couple of weeks in between these processors, but Honestly, it's kind of hard to know at this point. AMD are changing their plans on a dime. And again, I really want to stress this, guys. The competition between AMD and Intel is really fierce at this point. I think we all know this. And it's going to be interesting, to be honest with you, to see how it's marketed. Um, this is going to be one of those games where, you know, just an inch can make a huge difference. What do I mean by that? Let's just be really silly and say that there's a game. It doesn't matter what the game is. We'll just call it Barbie's Funhouse. And let's say that you get 100 frames a second on Zen 4. If Intel can get like 101, my goodness, <laughs> they, the, the benchmark graphs, they're going to be zooming those things in so that the, the difference in the graph is going to be like that. It's, it's not even going to be a disparity. It's going to be like a cosmos difference. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Of course, I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get the idea of what I'm saying here. Like, it's going to be one of those things where both companies are going to be seriously, seriously aggressive when it comes to not only the market, thing but also the segmentation and i do suspect intel are going to have some advantages here i'm really hopeful that intel will offer more mid-range unlocked raptor lake processors um and also i just want to tackle something that i've mentioned i believe a couple of times anyway but i just want to throw in here because i know people are going to ask what about the vcash processors amd have confirmed of course that they are incoming but to my understanding it's going to be in a plethora of SKUs. I, I'm almost positive it's going to be the 7950X and the equivalent of like the 7800X is going to be receiving the Vcash variants. I don't know if the other ones like the 7900 will be. Um, and it just makes sense. AMD are going to be doubling down on this technology. I have heard, you know, with the... Um, Okay, my brain has just like gone blank. 5800X3D, there we go. It was a hard thing to remember. The 5800X3D, uh, one of the big problems with it outside of the cost being kind of prohibitive, of course, is that the, you know, the temperatures start to go up. I've heard through the grapevine that AMD have made some serious inroads here to getting the temperatures down a lot and improving this uh, through multiple methods, which are slightly outside of the scope of this video to discuss because I'll be here all day going through that. But bottom line is, I think that we're going to see AMD really just leverage this technology. I'm also hearing it's going to be in mobile SKUs as well, but I'm going to be discussing that in an exclusive video because I'm working on a couple of things at the moment with some mobile SKUs. I was going to put it in this video, but yeah, um, it's just a lot to go through. So this video is going to end up like really long otherwise. And furthermore, I need to double check on a couple of things before I put the information out there. But I do believe AMD are going to be really pushing Vcash for mobile. How about the prices? Well, there was a tweet that Grayman put out briefly, and he essentially stated that the prices are going to be quite similar to that of what we've had um, with the launch of Zen 3. The issue is um, it's still several months until launch. And so when it comes to pricing, not only can pricing quite literally change like five minutes prior to launch, but also that information could be wrong anyway. Now, my gut feeling, honestly, is that we're going to see a small price premium over the previous generation. I have heard the AMD strategy, and it makes logical sense, is to basically use AM4 as like the, you know, the entry-level platform. Uh, AMD, I think, have even said this, um, I believe, maybe that, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just like imagining that, but I think they've said it in an interview. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe they said that, and I have heard as well that that's their strategy. So there's probably going to be a price premium. For AM5, um, that does kind of worry me for the 7600, you know, the six core processors. I don't know. That's gonna be, that's gonna be interesting. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very interested to see how AMD handles that. Um, obviously, there are cheaper board options, which is good. Um, but the real the real win here for amd is that ddr5 memory prices are going down it's going to be particularly interesting to see how um bandwidth mts transfer rates if you will and latencies affect something like the 5600 um because that's going to kind of let you know how much you can get away with when it comes to like memory because obviously you know tighter timings and faster memory and all of that stuff does cost a little more but again, just to reiterate, the prices of DDR5 have come down quite sharply. Um, and perhaps 
we can all thank Intel for Alder Lake in that respect because obviously at the end of the day, one company has to break ground. AMD have done it in the past. Nvidia have done it in the past. And at this point, Intel are doing it, which is great. I'll be very interested to see how this affects um, Raptor Lake because I believe DDR4 memory for the mid-range should be absolutely fine for Raptor Lake. DDR5 though, um, I think for gaming workloads, I was told that the 13900K can't saturate. Um, uh, sorry, for gaming workloads, DDR4 should be absolutely fine unless it's like hideously slow. Like if you're running like 2133, you know, memory, then well, I don't even know what to say to that. But if you're using reasonably fast DDR4 memory, um, a 13900K should be okay in gaming workloads generally. But heavy gaming workloads which just use tons of threads tons of cores or more realistically other workloads like you know simulation work like adobe premiere uh, 3d rendering that type of thing which are going to be a lot more memory bandwidth intensive i've heard there could be a bigger difference between ddr4 and ddr5 but that shouldn't impact you know the i5s so it's going to be interesting to see how you know the community kind of figure the best bang for buck because you know i'm not going to say a really obvious point here but not everyone has like a two thousand three thousand four thousand dollar budget for a build and so you know it it's like it's great to talk about processes like the 13900k or you know we're going to talk about nvidia's lineup in a moment like the 1490 but of course that's not realistic for everyone and to be honest with you stuff is expensive yo like yeah i, I won't go into that everyone knows that prices are up at the moment just for even basic groceries so I think people are going to be very cognizant of that and very much wanted to buy a good bang for buck system. So it's going to be very interesting to see how many people just jump onto like a cheap AM4 build, um, especially as obviously people are getting rid of their previous hardware or the number of people who are going to jump onto Intel's old link. And, you know, some people just want the latest and greatest, even if it's only a few percent boost. So it's going to be really interesting to see how all of that plays out. But now we're going to move on to NVIDIA. So just a brief update from Cup of T7 Kimi in terms of the power consumption of RTX 40. Basically, some of the SKUs have been reduced a little bit, quote unquote, in power consumption. Now, he believes that the AD102's maximum configuration is 800 watts. This is actually what I leaked quite some time ago, although I believe that's custom AIB boards. So that's how it was explained to me anyway. Um, to be clear here, we're not referring to like a custom AIB board that's like, I don't know, you know, a couple of fans. We're, we're talking about ones that would be like the hydro, you know, the hydro, um, you know, water cooled variants of like from Asus or MSI or whomever. These would be ones that were specifically designed around overclocking. But my information is a little old on that point. For all I know, this is going to be like the reference RTX 1490 design. So just bear that in mind. Like NVIDIA are really playing around a lot when it comes to the power consumption figures. And I just want to also mention that AD103 mobile is 100... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, a... it's 175 watts, bro. Like, dude. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, like Ghostbusters where you've got like literally like a, you know, Proton Accelerator on your back. Like that's going to be laptop gaming at 175 watts. Like seriously, dude. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. That's just, uh, that's just, I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, 175 watts anyway. Um, AD104 is allegedly the same, which is interesting. But the desktop 103 is 450 watts. The desktop 104 is 400 watts. So that's just sipping juice, isn't it? The AD106 desktop is 260 watts. And finally, AD106 is um, 140 watts. You can see N33's power consumption here that I've got for mobile. Um, I have also been told that N32 might be coming from mobile. I'm actually trying to double check that. So I'm not going to put those specs on screen because uh, I don't want to put them out. And then someone like just screenshots it and then it becomes a rumor. And then like, you know, it's too late at that point. So I, I don't 100% know whether N32 is coming to mobile. I've been told it by one source. But you can see what the power consumption of N33 is for mobile. Again, assuming my information is accurate. And you can see that it's reasonably good. Um, yeah, I mean, outside of the mobile side of things, frankly, I personally don't care so much about the power consumption to a degree. Like, the biggest issue I have is that 
well, first of all, power bills are just up at the moment in general. But outside of that, it's like just cooling it is the problem. I know that's a really obvious thing. That's like saying the only thing that's, you know, the problem of the house being on fire is the fact that your stuff gets burned. It's, you know, a really dumb thing to say. But just trying to actually cool the thing is just like the, the big challenge. Like, it's not necessarily the heat it puts out into the room um, because I live in the UK. So, you know, winter, it's fine. Uh, summer, you know, it sucks anyway, so just a little bit more suck, you know, air conditioning, I've got one. Again, this is a personal thing, I understand it's completely different for everyone, and that's totally understandable. But, yeah, like, 800 watts is a lot, but I, I still think it's going to be more likely to be like a 600 watts on average for like a 1490, but there is the Titan variance. Now, it is worth noting that Cup of Tea previously had said, I think it was like 900 watts, and I have personally heard that when overclocked and i want to stress this is this is the problem with these rumors because like you can be told something but you don't know whether it was overclocked whether it was just like you know that's just what they were testing whether it was like a specific skew or what but i have been told that there was like an overclocked test i think it was overclocked anyway the least the, at least the way it was described to me that pulled like a 900 or a thousand watts but that seemed to again be just trying to test the limits of the silicon and not necessarily what was going to be launched to customers but then again with titan who knows right like that was before the titan rumors so i honestly don't know guys it's going to be very interesting um and that i think is putting it mildly with that said i think that's just about it for this video you know what to do it's youtube if you've enjoyed the video leave a like and also check out my playstation 5 pro video uh, which has also recently gone up if you're interested in console stuff or also the metaverse and just gaming in general because there's a ton of very interesting topics I go through in that video. With that said, thanks very much for watching this one. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.